Hi guys and welcome to the first ever episode of Trout Talk Tuesdays. Every Tuesday we're going to go over a hot topic and give you tips and tricks that are going to help you both at the vice and on the bank. Today we're going to be discussing the topic of sea trout and I'm joined by my brother Connor Wilson who's going to go over the science behind what a sea trout is. Sea trout are in fact brown trout and due to genetic and environmental factors such as the lack of resources food, over generations they've become more adventurous and uh, ventured out to sea to start hunting. They then return to the rivers to breed and this is known as an andromedous life cycle. So how can you tell the difference between a brown trout and a sea trout? Well, when the brown trout starts to migrate to the marine environment, it'll go through physical and biological changes. Firstly, it'll gain tolerance for marine water, so um, salinity. Uh, secondly, it will change its brown colour to a silver colour. On returning to rivers, it will maintain the silver colour for two to four weeks. After that, it's very difficult to then uh, distinguish between a sea trout and a brown trout. But the best way in the UK to know if you've got a sea trout or a brown trout is UK rivers find it hard to uh, support life of four pounds or over fish. So if you catch a fish that's over four pounds, it's most likely a sea trout. Well, that's great advice. Let's have a look at the equipment we're going to use to catch sea trout. Okay, so the equipment for sea trout fishing is actually quite easy. For those of you who have done reservoir fishing or fish big still waters, you'll probably have one of these yourself. And that's a 10 foot, seven or eight weight uh, rod. You're gonna to wanna to match that with a large arbor reel. And then the line, I use two lines really. I use the floating line, which we're gonna be bringing out later this month. And I use the airflow six foot fast sink tip. This gets down to the depth where the fish are. And I found that I catch a lot more fish than the people who aren't using this line. So I highly recommend this line. I'll put a link to the description in this below. For fluorocarbon or leader material, you could use anything you want, but make sure it's strong. I recommend eight pound plus. I usually go for 10 or 12 pound. I use the Site Free G3 here. Again, links will be in the description below if you wanna buy it, but because it's at night, being Site Free is not so important. Just use something strong so you're not gonna lose that fish. Uh, Connor, what else would I need on a night out fishing? Well, I strongly recommend two torches. Obviously for navigating there for safety reasons, you're gonna need two torches, but a red light torch uh, doesn't penetrate the water as harshly as a normal torch would. And that's perfect for changing flies in a way that you won't scare the fish away that you're trying to catch. Also, you need waders um, to get fish a little bit further out. Um, and if you wanna wade in and catch fish that way, um, a net, a mesh net to land your fish safely and uh, that way it causes them less damage as well when you're handling them. Um, anything else? Yeah, another thing I'd say about the red torch is that uh, when you use a red torch to change your flies, your eyes don't, don't become so desensitized to the dark surrounding. When you use a white light and then turn that light off, you won't see anything. But with the red one, it doesn't affect your eyes so much, so that's a great reason to use a red torch. Let's go and have a closer look at what flies we recommend to use when fishing for sea trout. So when it comes to sea trout flies, they're pretty simple. Large, black and silver, you've got it covered. So here's a selection of the sort of flies I take on a night out. As you can see here, this is called a WMD. It's got the black and silver that I'd say every fly that's good for sea trout has. And it's got these jungle cock eyes you can see on the side. That's just a good little point that makes it look like a small fish. Now you have to remember when sea trout come into the river, they're not actually feeding. So they're taken out of aggression or territorial or, or just to see what it is basically. So making it look like a small fish or a sand eel or so something they're used to feeding on can often get a, an aggressive response. So that's what we're aiming for. And you can see here, a lot of these look very similar, but what they are is they're all different sizes with slightly different profiles. Now that's what I tend to take out on a night out. I use a pattern that I know, a few different sizes, and that way you can change and see what they want on any given night. Towards the top then, we've got some more specialist flies. These are the singles down the bottom. We've got an invention that I've come up with called the Stinger. Now these are incredibly effective for sea trout. And unlike most uh, hooks that I've used where they take and they come off because sea trout are masters of getting off the hook. Since tying these, me and my father-in-law haven't lost a single fish once it's on. You'll still get knocks and takes and bumps, but when they're on, they stay on. So these are ones I highly recommend. And I'll put links to these in the description below. At the very top then we've got tubes and snakes. These are really good on their given day. They create a huge profile and, uh, and the fish can be very aggressive towards these. They look like small fish in the water and they swim really nicely. So if you want to get an aggressive take from a big trout, usually later on in the night after the first couple of hours have died down, we'll put one of these on and they seem to get the bigger fish. And then we've got the specialist flies. These are surface lures. These are there to make a wake and they can either be very good or very bad. 
Now you can see the trout will come up and splash these, not always with their mouth either, they'll, they'll hit them with their fins and their tails, uh, but, but that lets you know where the fish is. So I'll go through with these, find out where the fish are, and then change to one of the other flies, and hopefully it'll take one of them. So as you can see, sea trout flies are pretty simple. Uh, if you want to buy any, have a look in the description below. I'll put a link down there. So let's have a look at some tips and tricks that you can use when you go fishing for sea trout. So let's go over some hot tips and tricks that are gonna help you catch more sea trout. What would you recommend as your number one tip, Connor? My number one tip, which I would recommend, which uh, the usual fisher often forgets, is to fish in complete pitch black. Um, often you'll wanna go down early, get your setup ready, and fish uh, as soon as it starts getting dark. That, you'll often catch a few small fish, but to catch the bigger ones, you wanna wait maybe half hour, 50 minutes uh, after dark, a complete dark, and you're more likely to catch a bigger fish. That's a great point, because a lot of people get in too early and spook the pool. Uh, often you'll catch one or two just as it's turning dark, and people seem to think this is a good time to start fishing, but what you do is you spook the bigger and the wiser fish who have been up the river two or three times, uh, and they won't come back that night. So, so you're, you're losing out for a big fish, a fish of a lifetime, just because you've been impatient by 15 minutes. So if you, if you yeah. can drown the anticipation, wait that 15 minutes, you'll catch more and bigger fish. Uh, my number one tip was probably fish close to the opposite bank. Uh, Hugh Falkers, who's a very famous sea trout fisherman, and he's probably written the book of sea trout fishing, said if you're not losing flies, you're not fishing close enough to the opposite bank. Uh, that's something I highly recommend. Another misconception is that you'll cast to the opposite bank and as it's swinging around towards the middle, the fish will take, so you think, oh, they're, they're hanging in the middle. But all that's happened is if you've gone past where he's lying, where he's holding and feels safe on the side of the bank, he's followed you with interest and as you're getting too far out into the open and he doesn't feel safe anymore, he'll, sl he'll slam it, he'll take it. Uh, and you'll think he's taken in the middle, but he's followed you from the edge. So make sure you're casting to the opposite bank and letting that swing around in, in, in the current. That's a great tip. Another tip from me would be to use the optimal fly. Um, magazines these days tend to push uh, smaller flies, but I recommend uh, one and a half to three inch size fly as the fish will be more in interactive with this fly and a uh, greater chance of it taken. Um, we also recommend the silver black traditional sort of flies. They're catching really well at the moment. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with that. We were out yesterday on the Tui and I was using a two inch uh, stinger fly, the ones we sell on our website, again the link's in the description below, and I had a lovely three and a half pound silver sea trout, so obviously it's working for us and that's what we recommend you trying out. Another great tip which a lot of people don't realise is, you said about the torches earlier and the red torch is a perfect idea, always turn your back away from the water, you want to keep as little light on that water as possible. You have to remember that these, these trout are spooky trout, they don't want to be caught, they don't, they don't like anything that's going to come and eat them, so, so if you're putting loads of light on the water, they're going to know you're there and they're, they're just going to stay under the bank and you won't see them for the rest of the night. So use that red torch if you're changing flies, face away from the water and try and keep that white torch far away from the river as possible. As anglers, we love interacting with the community. Not only does it help us as a business, it also helps out other anglers. So any uh, helpful tips or tricks that you like to use when sea fishing, sea trout fishing, leave in the description below. Also, any other topics you'd like to hear about on Trout Talk Tuesdays, also leave in the comments below and we'll try and tackle those as best we can. Anything from you? Yeah, all that's left to say is thanks for watching guys, the first ever episode of Trout Talk Tuesdays. If you'd like to save 10% of any flies or equipment at ukflyfisher.com, use the discount code TROUTTALK. I'll put links in the description to the website and everything you've seen in today's video and we'll see you in the next video. Today we'll be discussing the topic of sea trout and I'm joined with my... Uh, <laughs> Today we're going to be discussing the topic of sea trout and I'm joined by my brother Connor Wilson who's going to go over the science behind a sea trout. Sea trout, uh... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Bruce or Maya. On <laughs> genetic factors, they have changed over time. Um, they've... Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so how can you tell the difference between a brown trout and a silver trout? <laughs> <laughs> Ifs and buts and ms and yeah. Let's <laughs> try this again, shall we? Put a link in the description below if you want to purchase one. That gets down to the level that the fish are feeding at. Well, they don't feed! Ah! They're not? No, they don't feed in, uh, in the river. You're going to learn today! <laughs> 
That's a great tip. Another tip from me is using the optimal uh, fish. Use size. that optimal fish, boys. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> everything you've seen in today's video and we'll see you in the next video bye <laughs> bye <laughs> yeah, we